In this video, we are going to construct the Z axis for the C3DT slash C cantilever printer as seen on Instructables, link below the video. If we're looking at the parts, we have the aluminum extrusion. We're using 12 millimeter steel rod. Uh, I, the first time I implemented this rail, I used 8 millimeter rods and it was just too flexible with the 12 millimeter rods. This works fine. These are 400 millimeter rods, so that gives us a print height of about, about 280 millimeter, given that there is this rail running on it. Uh, so we have two of these. I got these at McMaster Car. They're also available on Amazon, but I prefer to go with McMaster Car because their quality is a little bit better and you know what you get. We have these 12 millimeter pillow blocks. These came from Amazon. These linear blocks come with M5 threaded rods. So these are actually M5 screws. I normally work with M3 only. And these screws are 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter M5 hex socket screws. The usual guide screw, rarely available on Amazon with the little nut. All you really need for this type of printer. We're using a NEMA 17 motor. This one uh, was a used one I got in the trade, and it works fine. The printer parts are the actual. The slider that goes up and down the rail that will actually hold on to the, the X axis. Uh, we have the NEMA coupler that will attach to the NEMA and to the rail. And then we have the end stop that sits at the top that keeps the uh, rods and the linear and the screw, uh, guide screw in place. And then last we have the uh, extruder adapter since this is a Bowden printer, the extruder will be actually attached to the uh, Z-axis. We can do that in here. Now these NEMA connectors, they actually click onto the rail like this, and they don't come off easily. That said, I did add holes in here to reinforce this with some t-nuts so you can actually screw it in place and make sure it doesn't slide because it doesn't come off but it can slide up and down with enough force so see so it can slide up and down so the thing is if you drop your printer a little hard on the table or you actually run into something with the printer head these might actually slide so with the t-nut screws in there it should secure but i'm gonna take it off now uh, again, I've said in the previous videos, but that is why I'm using the linear rail with the profile in the side. So it has these little ridges in the side. Those little ridges correspond with the actual printed design. Uh, these ridges exist here as well, and they make for a very strong connection when these items clip onto the rail itself. The same goes for this uh, slider that actually will connect to the uh, x-axis. Again, there is this uh, rail in here that will click exactly around the profile of the aluminum extrusion. But again, I have provided for two uh, additional holes in the slider as well to put T-nuts through to make sure that nothing comes off in case of some brute force power exerted on any of these rails. Those are all the parts. Links to the parts will be uh, in the Instructable. Like I said, most of it is from Amazon. The only thing I ordered was from McMaster Car. Are these uh, linear, are these rods? Oh, sorry, I forgot the one piece, which is the coupler. This is the coupler that will actually connect the motor to the lead screw. All right, first things first. What we can do is we can start adding these rails from McMaster card. They actually come fairly 
greased so carefully you're not going to mess up any of your parts with this grease okay so these go both in the NEMA connector and the, the rail end connector these holes have been printed very tight and I did that on purpose because I did not want to get these sliding around in there loosely if one of the blocks were to grind and drag the rail with it along so this is actually going to take some brute force I personally like to use just a wooden block doesn't do any damage to anything get it in there and that's connected All right, these are in there. I will try to turn the volume down a little bit when I do that in the video. Okay, the next step will be to add the pillow blocks to the rails. Do that before you add this one, because you only get one chance at this. If we look at the orientation, this would be the front where the, Z, the X axis is connected. And we're gonna add these pillow blocks Orient it this way. I mean, you can turn them at some later point, but um, I use four pillow blocks. You might get away with three pillow blocks to get enough stability, but you know, I have all the holes in place for the four pillow blocks, so we're gonna just add all of that right now. Okay, at this point, we can add the end stop. go down and I'm going to add the end stop make sure that you orient the back of the end stop the same direction as the NEMA connector I'm going to do this I am going to add, like I said, these clips will clip onto the, the extrusion, but what I'll do is I'm actually going to add some additional supports through here. So I'm going to add a T-nut. And I'm going to do the same thing through here. So I'm going to add two T-nuts as well through here, so that way we can make sure it's secure against the aluminum extrusion all right so by having these t-nuts in place right now i can when we attach it to the actual rail we can secure it without having to worry about it coming off i'm going to set this aside for a second put this guy together. The way it works is the lead nut is actually going to be inserted in here. I have holes lined up in here that go in here so we can actually attach it with these are uh, six millimeter M6, uh, M3 six millimeter screws and we're just gonna screw these right into the plastic that goes like that that's not coming off okay the next thing we are going to do is we're actually going to add this to the extrusion and the reason we want to do this at this point is because once the motor and the lead screw are in we will no longer be able to access these T-nut screws that secure the uh, entire structure to the aluminum extrusion as far as the height is concerned where to put this on the rail I think it, uh, the point is that this entire 
component can go low enough, of course, to reach the bed. If you put the rail too high, you're not going to reach the bed. If you put it too low, you'll be sacrificing some print height because you know you won't be able to use the screw wheel if you go too low. I think the best bet is to go about five centimeters from the bottom of the rail here. We would be pretty much placing this in this location. A couple of millimeters left or right, you know, it doesn't make a huge difference, but again, like any millimeter as far as print height is concerned, you know, the higher you want to go, the less you want to sacrifice. So I'm going to line up the T-nuts here, the T-nuts lined up there, T-nuts lined up there. At this point, let me double check the five centimeters. That is correct. The other thing you have to take note of is that uh, the actual motor has to fit underneath, so the body of the motor cannot be more than five centimeters in this case, which it is not. Now I'm gonna just click it on, a little body weight on there, and you can you heard the clicks. There we go, click click. So now it's on. It's almost secure by itself, but these T nuts are gonna make it just the more secure. So let me double check before I tighten this down if there's enough room. So we got five centimeters. Actually just came down a little bit. Let's see if we can knock this up a little bit. Let's see what happened there. Now we're at five centimeters again. Okay, so we can tighten the T-nuts. Now for this one here I added the a hole in the front so you can actually go through it but you're gonna to have to have a longer wrench. There we go. That one gripped. Let's check this one. Okay, this one is gripping. I'm not gonna tighten this down with too much violence because after all this is plastic and you will be able to screw right through. I mean it'll crack the plastic if you go too hard. All right, and I'm going to secure it at this end. We have the rail secured to the extrusion. At this point, we can do a number of things. What I'll do next is I will add the slider to the pillow blocks. And that's just a matter of adding the M5 10 millimeter screws. Make sure that before we add this block to the this slider to the rail, that we actually insert the T nuts. If I hadn't done so before, or hadn't mentioned it, make sure that these are in place. There is room between the pillow blocks of the rail to actually tighten these screws, but you will not be able to get the screws in there because I wanted to conserve as much space so the pillow blocks are close enough to be able to get one of these through there but the actual screw and the, the, the head of the screw will not fit through there so make sure that these are in place these T-nuts are to secure the X-axis in place when it's connected to this slider alright so we're just gonna I'm gonna add all of these pillow blocks fast forward through that now frankly adding these eight screws would be way more than enough to actually keep all the blocks in place. Interesting thing is that I do feel a slight binding in here right now. Which is not entirely good. Interesting, as I'm adding these middle screws, what's happening is, is that these blocks slightly get bent and it starts binding. And I noticed that when I release the middle screws, that binding goes away. And that's kind of because the blocks now have the liberty of moving in the right position. 
So I would almost be tempted to say if you do get that binding, don't. Like, you know, remove the screws that you don't really need. I am actually, uh, this roll is much easier. I'm going to see if I can add what happens if I add screws back here. Still no binding, so that's good. Going to add the next screw. And I'm still not getting any binding. And I have no binding. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to, and this totally depends on uh, your rails, your blocks. They seem to be all in place, but when I add the middle screws, something's being pushed slightly out of the way, causing the blocks to grind. And that is not a good thing, so I'm going to tighten these down. And to be honest, this is way more than enough screws to keep this in place. So I'm actually not even going to add the middle screws in here. And I suggest you don't do that either. But you can try it, and if there's no binding, then the stronger. But honestly, with these, right now we have eight M5 screws in here. This is not going anywhere. This is just fine. So I'm not going to bother adding the middle screws. Actually, let me try one thing. I'm going to I am kind of curious just to see where the binding is coming from. See, and now at this point, I'm getting resistance. So what's happening is this screw right now is pulling this block kind of crooked and it's causing binding. And you don't want that because that is what's going to add choppy behavior to your print and the other thing it's going to do it is going to wear down the bearing balls within this rail. That one works fine too. Alright, next up we can add the guide screw, the coupler and the motor and we can actually kind of do that all as part of one. What we can do is, first of all I want to make sure this is how the printer will be oriented. The, the bed, the, the case, the PSU will be here. The Z axis is to the left of the printer. And I want to add the motor with the wiring towards the printer because I want to have a shortest path as possible. We can add, I got one of these couplers. Again, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, make sure that this is center properly not all of them are are i found out the hard way okay these use a smaller screw bit and i want to make sure that the flexible part here kind of remains in between the axes of the motor and the actual lead screw so that there is room but keep in mind this coupler will meet this component here so as low this is as low as when you put this through. This is as low as the X axis can go. At this point, we can slide in the lead screw and the coupler. And of course, now you're going to meet the lead screw nut. So we're going to have to start turning this in. And there we have it. Okay, now we can uh, connect the NEMA motor. And we're going to use 225 millimeter and 216 millimeter screws for that. bits and the screws in the back are 25 what you might find and this is going to be a little short for room but what you might find is that depending on where the actual screw that holds the motor together meets up in the back here the depth of this is different so in this case I'm using 25 
it might be that you need a 22 or a 23 screw 20 would be too short that's 20 is the exact depth of where you would meet the bottom you need something from 22 to 25 millimeters but I know that some of these NEMA motors have very little uh, wiggle room inside to actually get the screw in deep so that's you might be better off with a 22 millimeter there but this one works with 25 millimeter there you go as a matter of fact this screw set that I got actually comes with an attachment like this which is kind of nice so you can actually go around the corners if you must but this works fine uh, but you know it's a handy tool to have okay so now we have the screw rail the lead screw in place so everything is up and running the only thing remaining is to add the adapter for the extruder and the, it's kind of your own preference about how long of a Bowden tube this is a Bowden printer so what will happen is when the axis is up the extruder motor will sit on this side extrusion will go through here and the Bowden tube will walk will go into a curve to your printer you're kind of variable as to where or how high you set this uh, motor and again it's very easy to move it up and down later on in the game these both fit in there okay so and then we're going to attach this to the rail here and that's where the extruder motor will go later all right and there you have it the z axis to the c3dt slash C printer. This is about the heaviest part of the printer itself, mainly because of these 12 millimeter bars, but they were needed because we are dealing with a cantilever system. The entire cantilever is supported by these two 12 millimeter metal bars along with the pillow blocks that it, that is running on those bars. All right. If you like what you see, give me thumbs up subscribe uh, if you really want to help me out go to my patreon account link below the video uh, i'm doing all of this for free i get really nothing in return i could really use any help you can provide thank you and good day